Hello everybody. So, this is uh, quite an important statistic or statistical analysis that you need to know how to do, especially for your report. So I thought I'd do a little video on this. So we have our our data over here. So we would then copy that into SPSS. And here we have it. We have our participants ID. We have the variable of age, the variable of annual income, and the variable of illness events. Let me just close that quickly. No. Okay. So this is our data set. And you can see that we only have an N of 10. Only 10 participants participated in this. And that is a very small sample size for a multiple regression. But it's just an example, so we're going to go with it. So our first... Uh, step would be to test for the assumptions. One of the assumptions is normality, which I explained how to do in the other video. And everybody seems to have a, a good understanding of that, so we won't go over that again. And there are other assumptions that are needed to be tested for, for a multiple regression. And these include testing for outliers. And to do that, we will use uh, scatter plots. An outlier is a very uh, a serious issue when you're using uh, some type of correlational design. So we need to test for that. So basically an outlier means that one data point doesn't follow the relationship within the other data points. So to do that, we would use a scatter plot. Let me just go over that more slowly. So we go to graphs, chart builder, and then we can choose down here, we can choose a scatter plot. Let's reset this, choose a simple scatter. And then our y-axis, we would have our dependent variable, which in this scenario is illness events. We want to see if age and annual income are predictors of illness events. So then we would start off with doing a, using age. And then we would do another one for annual income. Now basically, we want to see if these data points kind of follow the same type of trajectory as the rest of them. And another way, to, an easy way to do that is double click on the graph and then click on and add a reference line. You can close that. You can see there's a, a pretty much a, a positive relationship. As age increases, the number of illness events increases as well. So we're looking for data points that don't really match this. So you could argue, I suppose, it's more difficult to see when there's a less data point on the on this plot, but we could argue that this is pretty much following the same type of pattern. We could also argue that this data point up here doesn't quite fit because this person is quite young, yet they've had a high number of illness events, and possibly that this person is quite old, but they've only had a relatively a few number of illness events. However, they mostly fit on the same data line. And because we only have a sample size of 10, removing any data point would be um, a very serious consideration. And if we look at the scatter plots of illness events versus annual income, we can see that there's kind of a slight negative correlation. So as your income increases, you're less likely to have an illness event compared to a low income individual. It's not, not a particularly strong relationship, but that's generally the idea of where these uh, data points are going. Okay, so we can see that there are there's no really outstanding outliers in this data set. Again, it's when there's such a small n sample size it's difficult to really see what are outliers and what may be just a a true representation of what's happening right so that's that's our outliers done right so now we need to test um, for autocorrelation and multicollinearity so autocorrelation is tested using the durbin watson test and it needs to be around a value of two so that shows that the errors are uncorrelated and we can also 
use test for multicollinearity using the VIF and we want it to be somewhere between 1 and 10 closer to 1 is better and if it's above 10 it is a concern and you should probably do some data transformation or else uh, multiple regression won't really be applicable so these are all done within the regression test so we'll get to that in a bit and then there's also a test of homoscedasticity that's, that's quite a mouthful to say but essentially we want to see if the variance is equal between the different um, levels of the axes. Yeah, the residuals for each level of the independent variable should have the same variance and this can be assessed within the regression analysis. So we'll get to that in a bit. So essentially we want to see if homoscedasticity is applicable if, the, the, um, if it kind of follows the same pattern you can see this is a, a kind of a negative correlation. It's all pretty much pointing to that. But if we have a look on a graph which shows heteroscedasticity, which means the variances are not equal, it kind of goes both ways. So it kind of is both a negative correlation and a positive correlation, and that means that it's uh, the variances are not equal. All right. So let's go on to the actual stats. Let's open our SPSS. Let's close that. Oh, I'm just going to leave it open. So we want to go to analyze, regression, and linear. And then because our dependent variable, we're looking at which outcomes or predictors influence the number of illness events. We would have illness events as our dependent variable and age and annual income as our independent variable. All right, so we want to use our method of enter. It's really the best way to use multiple regression analysis. And then we go to statistics and we want to choose our regression coefficient estimates. We can also add confidence intervals as well. And here we want to look at model fit and we want to look at collinearity diagnostics and we want to look at the Durbin Watson residuals analysis. Okay, so once we click those, click OK. And then we also want to go to plots. Now we want to have we want to plot our residuals against our predictors but in a standardized format. So we would choose um Z predictor as our x variable, our independent variable, and we'll choose our residuals as our y variable. Okay, so when you've entered those things in different axes, we'll click continue, and then we'll click OK. Okay, so we'll, we'll come back to this analysis in a bit, but mainly we want to see, we want to check for the assumption of homoscedasticity is met. So we would kind of look at this graph and see if all the data points are in a similar direction, which we can kind of see that they are. Maybe this outlier here is a bit of an issue, but again, we're just uh, using this as an example of what to look for. But they all, it all kind of cones into a, a negative correlation over here. So the highest points are at the left side of the graph and the lowest points are at the right side of the graph on the x-axis and the y-axis. So in this case we can kind of uh, take a tentative assumption that the assumption of homoscedasticity has been met in this data set and so we can continue with our analysis. Right so the model summary this shows us um, a couple of important stats. The, one of the most important ones is the adjusted R squared so this is 0.568. So this allows us to interpret that our two independent variables of um, illness events, I mean, sorry, of annual income and age predict 56.8% of the variance explained within the model. So age and annual, annual income can predict illness events or 56.8% of illness events based on the data we've entered. We can also see our Durbin-Watson statistic is 2.12. And as I said earlier, we want it to be around 2. So we can say that um, the errors are uncorrelated within our data set. So that's a check for the next assumption. And next, we want to look at the VIF. So we go down here to the coefficients. And we can see that the 
VIF values are both around 2 in this case and so that is pretty close to 1 and far away from 10 so we can say that our assumption of multicollinearity has been met well testing for multicollinearity has been met and the variables don't have multicollinearity so that's that's good Okay, so now all of our assumptions have been met, so we can go on to interpret our data set. Okay, firstly, let's look at the ANOVA model. This is an overall kind of test to see whether the data fits in the model. And we can see that it is significant. Our p-value, sig, stands for our probability that it's the assumption is met. So we can see it's below 0 0.05, it's 0 0.22, 0 0.022. And so we can proceed to interpreting our, our coefficients. So we don't really want to look at the unstandardized coefficients. We rather want to look at the standardized coefficients, the beta values. And we can see here that both age and annual income are statistically significant, 0 0.01 and 0 0.011. Now here we want to see the the value or the sign of these beta scores is important because it shows in which direction the the graph would be for or like the association would be um, going towards. So we can see as the number of illness events increases by one, the age of the participants would also increase or by unit. So as age increases, the number of illness events would increase as well. However, you can see that there's a negative value for annual income, which suggests that as annual income increases, the number of illness events would decrease. Okay, those are our two main interpretations here. And also to remember that in a multiple regression, the variables are not interpreted on an individual basis. If they're together in a model, the other outcome is controlled for. So for example, age would control for the influence of annual income and annual income would control for the influence of age so they need to be interpreted together okay so let's uh, go over how you report these let me get my powerpoint presentation all right oops all right let's get back up here to the model summary Move that a bit so we've got more space. Okay, there we go. So, right up. We used the multiple regression to examine whether age and self reported income predicted self reported incidence of illness over a five year period. The regression equation produced a good fit with the data, so we're looking at R squared. And I suppose, yeah, so you need to report both the R squared itself, which is 0.664 and the adjusted R squared, which is a more conservative estimation of the variance explained. Indicating that the combined influence of age and income was a good predictor of the incidence of illness events. So now we go and report our model outcome here. So highlight this area. So here we can see in the ANOVA model, F with a degree of freedom for the regression of two and a degree of freedom of the residuals of 7, so here we see our 2, 7, equals 6.9 rounded off to 2, and P equals 0 0.022. Okay, so now that's our, that's the first part. Now we can see that there was a significant positive relationship between the age of the incidence of, between age and the incidence of illness events, T, so we can get our T values here, with a degree of freedom of 7, let's go back to our residual degree of freedom, equals 3.48 with a P of 0 0.01, right? With the number of illness events increasing with age because it's a positive association. As age increases, illness would increase as well. However, there was a significant negative relationship between income and the incidence of illness events. T here is negative 
3.4 with a p a significance value of 0 0.011 and this association suggested that with the number of illness events decreasing with increasing income that's what i explained earlier okay so overall you got to like have a little conclusion for what you've done results indicated that the older people are so as age increases and the lower their income the more illness events they are likely to have so that's a nice little APA summary of the write-up after testing our assumptions and yeah that that's pretty much it for now well good luck with the rest of your activities and with your um, your reports